Well, now I want to show you debug, uh, yeah, debugging with Ollie and exe hacking. And this is the fun stuff. Everybody pretty much loves it because you're, um, this is how you cheat at Windows games. So to make sure everything stays on the screen properly, I'm going to try to just do everything in my cloud server here. So let me make this the right size. Fill the screen as much as possible. All right. And let's get the page open inside here. All right. All right. All right, and it's here, 401, EXE hacking with Ollie Debug. So, um, we, Ollie Debug and HashCalc are already installed, and we've already got PuTTY, which we used before. So the first thing we're going to do is hack PuTTY to change this login as message. So, um, let me just go, I think I have it in my downloads folder. Did it earlier. Yep, there's, there's PuTTY. All right. So let me just, I like to copy and paste it and work in it with a copy because I often make a mistake and change modified versions on top of the original. So I'm going to make a file called putty2. It's just a copy of the original putty. All right, and now I want to open that in Ollie Debug. <coughs> All right, and I'll, I don't need administrative rights, that's okay. And here's my PuTTY 2. All right, so as we said before, the first thing is look in the corner. It's paused. Nobody, you can't use it now. And here we are seeing the assembly code instructions. And here it shows you the Windows API calls. So it's actually pretty readable if you start here. You just see API calls, even if you're not good at reading assembly, which most people aren't at first. Anyway, let me go to, so I want to find that message that says login as. And so, um, what I'm going to do is, um, to find it, I'm going to search for all referenced text strings. So I right-click here. It matters where you right-click. You want to right-click in the uh, assembly code pane, and then search for all referenced text strings. And now I'm looking for text strings referenced in the putty 2txt section, which is the section that contains assembly code. And these are not just strings, which you would have found with a product like strings or bin text, which just looks for any series of bytes that happen to be readable. These are strings that are actually used in commands with addresses as function arguments or something. So these are used strings, referenced strings. So I'm going to go to the top just to make it easy and search for text and look for login as. All right, and I find it. Here is a command that pushes a pointer to the string login as. And if I find again, uh, I guess right, whoops, whoops, stop that. I said stop that. All right, got to be a little bit slow. Right click, search next. There's another one and search next. That's it. There's only two of them. So I don't know which one of them is the one that's being used to print the message I can see. So what I'm going to do is put breakpoints at both of them. So search next and press F2 to put a breakpoint there. It turns red. And then search next and F2 to put a breakpoint on that one also. So now it'll stop as soon as it tries to use that message. So I can go back to the CPU window and I can just run the program. And it opens a window here waiting for a server name. So I give it a server name. One of mine is ad.samsclass.info. And then I click open. And now it hits the breakpoint. So it does not print out the message. I can't even see the box, but it doesn't matter. See which breakpoint it was. It was 41CB6E. This is the instruction that prints that message. So now that I know that, I'm going to clear this breakpoint with F2. And I could clear the other one, but I don't think it matters because I'm not using that part of the code. And I'd like to just modify this message. So you see, this tells you here 
that this address is pointing to login as and you can right click and follow in dump immediate constant. This will read an address from the current instruction and dump it. So it reads this address 467C7C and goes there and dumps out the text. And here you have login as colon space null byte. And in C, you terminate strings with a null byte. So that's the login as message. So one way to, to change this is if I just change the last byte here, 7C to 7D, it'll skip the first letter. And so you do that with right click assemble. And now you can change that command. And I'm going to change it from C to D and assemble and then cancel because I don't want to change anything else. And now it is login as instead of login as. So I just want to save the program with this change. It took me a long time to learn how to save things from Ollie Debug. It is not obvious. The best thing to do is to save it after every single change. If you make several changes and try to save it, you often find that not all those changes have actually been saved. So go to the part you've changed and right click there and um, copy to executable all modifications. This all modifications is misleading. It means all modifications in that segment. And that this pane is the text segment. The other panes are things like the data segment. And if you change both segments and try to save the file, you won't get both changes, which confused me for a long time. So copy all. And now I have a program here with the modified instruction. And I can right click um, Save File. And I'll call this PuTTY3. All right. And now I'm done with Ollie for the moment. And I can run PuTTY3. And give it a server. And open. And now it is missing the L. It's just Augin as. So I've now made a modified file. And as I demonstrated for the class before the break, but I don't think I got it in the video, if you look at the properties here, this is signed code, digital signature, but I just modified it. And that means if you go to the details, it will tell you the signature is not valid. And it is one of the mysteries of Windows that it lets me run a signed program, modify it so the signature is broken, and it just lets me keep using it without even warning me or anything. I don't know what the point of that is at all, but that's the way Microsoft Windows works, even in the latest version. So we've made one version of the modified file now, and now we can uh, do other things here. Here's one where you just uh, you rewrite the whole login message with another message, which is pretty easy. And I think, um, all right, there's a couple flags you can get here by just changing the login message. But I want to get ahead to this one here, 000. This one is really fun. I got this from a Capture the Flag. I think EasyCTF, one of the Capture the Flag contests, made this thing. And this thing is great for learning. So I've downloaded that file. And here it is in my downloads folder. And originally, there were thousands of these in a big, complicated project. But this is just one file a little part of a CTF problem that I thought was instructive. And you have to have a command prompt. It's a command line application. And so if you go to where it is, which is downloads for me, and do a directory, uh, there it is, 0000.exe. So if you run this program, let me maximize the window so things don't go off the screen. All right, so if I was 00 and run this program, it asks me for code. And if you give it a number, it insults you. My dog figured this out before you. That's all it is. It's a guessing game. And apparently, there is some code that is right, but I don't know it. And presumably, if I guessed long enough, I would find it. But who cares about that? We're going to cheat. So start Ollie. And uh, yeah, I don't need to be the administrator for what I'm doing. And open that 000 file. All right. And this thing is about the greatest file ever because the entire assembly language program is just this big. You can see the whole thing right here in Ollie, and you can read it right here in Ollie. That is the whole blooming thing. So, and the easiest way to do it is to use the right-hand side pane here that shows you the system calls. It is like four lines of C. Put S will print this string, launch code. Scanf will read something that is decimal. 
Then it will print, wow, you got it, or I think my dog found it. So this is the win message, and this is the fail message. So you don't have to be able to be very good at reading assembler to figure out how this works. It prints a message, it reads something from the user, then down here it does some kind of compare, and then it does a jump not zero. So this compare is obviously deciding whether you got it right. And if you got it right, then you go to the win message, so you don't take the jump. If you didn't get it right, you take the jump to 205A down here, which is where you print, I think my dog uh, is smarter than you or something. So all we want to do is not take this jump. So to cheat at this game, it's enough to just not do the compare and not do the jump and fall through to the win message. So I just need to, to get rid of this command and get rid of that command. Now the way you get rid of a command in assembler is you put nops there. So right click assemble and there's the command and replace it with nop. Nop is no operation. The assembly language command that does nothing. So it fills them all up with nops. You can just keep clicking assemble to go through all the bytes. And here's one more. I want to get rid of that jump also. So I hit assembler and that's it. Now I'm done. I cancel. I've now made a modified game where it will take anything for you to call it the right answer. So I save this the same way. A copy to executable, all modifications. Copy all. Right click, save file. And I'm going to call it 0000, 000, 000, 000 mod. And now I got a game I can win. So I guess I closed my command prompt. Go to the downloads. And there it is, 000 mod. So let's run the modified game. And now when I give it one, I win. So, and you get one letter every time you win and it chases out another thing and so on. So anyway, that gives you a little bit more practice using uh, Ali Debug. And there's some more uh, um, challenges down here where you have to do more of them and then automate the process in Python so you can do hundreds of them and so on. The original one you had to do 65,000 of them and then you had 65,000 characters of JS fuck which you had to run and figure out. Uh, anyway, this is a portion of that challenge. But it's a good way to get started understanding assembly code and how to modify executables. And you don't really have to be very good at reading assembly code to do simple things. So that's what I wanted to show you.